And now I want to give pass the word to another of our great talent within the Singularity Net Foundation. So next to speak is Dagim Sisai, uh, one, one of our programmer out of our office in Addis Ababa in, in Ethiopia. And uh, Dagim is gonna tell us more about the new net spin-off project incubated by Singularity Net. Over to you, Dagim. Well, today we're currently building a decentralized computing platform with more focus on interoperating AI services. Uh, the whole concept of NUNET is basically uh, founded upon the fact that there is a huge amount of computing resource in consumer devices that is very much underused for most of the time. And we would like to utilize this uh, computing resource and offer it as uh, a shared resource for the, for the NUNET community. Uh, so when building this NUNET platform, uh, we believe that there would be, in general, three types of uh, users of this, this platform. One are the uh, compute providers that basically contribute their computing resources uh, to the platform so that their uh, CPU power or memory or storage or network bandwidth can be used um, to offer services on the platform. Uh, when compute providers are uh, contributing their compute, uh, computers to the platform, uh, basically uh, we have this NUNIT adapter that basically isolates everything that uh, runs from uh, the NUNIT platform in a certain execution environment where it, it doesn't interfere with uh, other work that those device owners may be doing uh, on their computers. And they will be rewarded or compensated for their uh, resources that they have offered the platform with uh, a certain economic mechanism that uh, basically calculates uh, all the CPU that has been used, the memory or storage or network bandwidth that has been used to run services, and they would be compensated based on that. Uh, second types of users would be uh, developers uh, that basically want to host uh, services uh, on pretty much uh, uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, so uh, developers would have uh, a much cheaper option than what currently exists in the market. Uh, since this is a community shared platform, uh, uh, it would be, uh, uh, there would be much less maintenance and the burden of maintenance and uh, uh, scaling uh, would rest on the community itself and it would be shared. So uh, they would have a, a much cheaper option to host their service on. And they would also be uh, incentivized with uh, token payments so that they would, they would offer uh, better coding algorithms uh, on the platform. Third types of users are the ones that make use of uh, these previous two types of users. Uh, these are the consumers uh, which basically want to run uh, some service on some device or they would want uh, some storage or uh, well, whatever it is they need, uh, they can access it uh, from uh, the NUNIT platform in a more uh, decentralized manner. So the main challenge of building the NUNIT platform would be having this self-organizing or self-sustaining uh, uh, self uh, platform that basically uh, expands dynamically whenever new computer devices are uh, contributed to the system or new AI algorithms or AI services are uh, hosted on the system by the developers or whenever consumers would like to run uh, whatever service that is hosted on uh, the platform itself. And uh, one other goal that NUNIT currently strives for is to have uh, AI services communicate with each other in order to offer a more rich uh, service than, than their individual uh, services. Uh, for example, uh, most of AI services that we know today um, are basically narrow AIs that do one specific thing well, but it would be very difficult to have them do something else uh, without changing code or without changing training data or without changing models. So, uh, Lunit, so that, the, the other thing Lunit would provide uh, is to offer uh, interdependency between AI services so that they can work with each other and offer a more rich uh, uh, service. For example, if we have a consumer that's, let's say, is building a human robot with, uh, that it, that's capable of making facial recognition, object recognition, uh, having interactions with uh, uh, humans around it, and it's able to 
listen to what the people are saying and is able to respond and all those sort of things that uh, that come with uh, building a robot that, that that has all these functionalities the net platform would be able to offer for example a speech text uh, functionality from one developer that's providing that technology and another uh, developer would be maybe serving facial recognition technology and uh, all these services can come into together uh, together uh, into uh, one uh, one service that is offering a much richer experience for the consumers so uh, while building this uh, platform uh, we're figuring out a lot of uh, clever ways in, of, uh, of building it. For example, uh, we would need to have some peer-to-peer -peer communication since uh, most of these devices are sitting behind uh, NAT devices that, are, that doesn't allow them to uh, be accessible from the public internet. And since the decentralization aspect of uh, NUNET actually demands uh, not having a centralized uh, entity which uh, manages the communication between uh, uh, AI services or devices, we would need to come up with uh, better ways of uh, uh, service discovery and device discovery whenever new computer devices are joining the, the platform or when, whenever new AI services uh, are being hosted by the developers. Uh, so we've had several runs uh, uh, at the design of uh, Lunate, and we also participated uh, in a hackathon a few months ago, and we learned uh, a lot uh, while uh, building some uh, demonstration application uh, for the hackathon. For example, we went for uh, a fake news detection application uh, where we would have uh, stance detection algorithms running on several devices. These are uh, very different stance detection algorithms that are running on different devices. And we also had uh, an ensemble uh, or an aggregator service, which makes use of all those stance detection services uh, to bring them as one and uh, uh, offer the service uh, as a whole, as a fake news detection uh, uh, service. So well, as a demonstration, we built a browser extension uh, for uh, the Brave browser, uh, where uh, users can uh, basically be reading a news item and uh, the browser extension would make it like uh, would utilize the net platform in order to run the stance detection so the different running on different machines and uh, to have the results uh, assembled together and uh, offer the results to the consumer that is basically sitting on any computer with a web browser so uh, we also uh, were able to apply uh, battle-tested uh, orchestration uh, and service discovery software such as Nomad and Kunsu uh, for uh, service uh, deployment and uh, discovery uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, it is one of the goals of the net platform to to have uh, everything that's uh, open source and that everything that's uh, uh, basically functional in the real world to have it uh, applied uh, within the within the platform itself. So we've been very careful about uh, uh, designing and building the net platform, uh, considering each module carefully, such as the APIs, the messaging protocols, and the format that would allow uh, devices to discover each other and to work uh, with each other, relinquish tasks uh, to each other, and uh, for AI services to also uh, merge themselves into a certain workflow and to collaborate with each other in order to offer uh, better and more uh, complex services and uh, also to compensate uh, each other with uh, some tokenomic mechanism. So uh, this is the path that we've, uh, that we're taking uh, with Nunit. Thank you, Dagim. And uh, now it's time for Kabir Veitas, one of our senior AI researcher and co-founder of Nunit who's going to tell us his point of view on, uh, on NUNET. So a little bit more about decentralized computing networks. Over to you, Kabir. Thank you. NUNET team is currently engaged in the development of the, of the NUNET platform alpha version, which we expect to release somewhere on the second half of, the, of this year hopefully in the very beginning of the second half of the 2021. 
and the alpha version will will include the fundamentals of the platform including the main functional functional properties enabling the main functional properties such as the computational reflection uh, context awareness the mobility of ai agents on the hardware meaning that ai agents will be able to choose the hardware on which they will uh, be able to execute themselves and the value exchange between both ai agents in terms of the real value exchange of, of data in terms of data and the sort of monetary expression of value in terms of the crypto tokens as well as value exchange between the, the software and hardware so that uh, software could pay for hardware for executing itself on a certain hardware resources that it needs to execute itself on and uh, so the technical vision in short of NUNET is to build a self-organizing hardware and software mesh where algorithms, AI agents and, and hardware devices could find, she, find each other, uh, connect into workflows and compensate each other via the tokenomic mechanism, blockchain agnostic tokenomic mechanisms. Uh, NUNET develops um, by picking a user facing show case applications and developing the platform so that the application becomes fully fully functional so currently such an application for the alpha version of the platform is a fake news detector and with the help of this showcase applications we are developing low level protocol engineering for the of the platform uh, APIs and messaging protocols on the platform level, the service discovery mechanisms for the AI agents to discover each other and AI agents to discover the hardware that they need to run themselves, the device onboarding mechanism which will allow to onboard uh, different types of devices and different with different uh, running different operating systems on the on the platform and to connect to the same workflows. Uh, network telemetry monitoring uh, framework which will show the, the computational power of the network uh, bindings that are needing for the uh, that are needed for interaction of of of, of uh, AI agents and hardware devices with different blockchains so we are including as much as possible of these of these functionalities into the into the platform. Of course, this is the alpha version. Therefore, we are we are not going to include everything. However, we are go we want to include the basics of these functionalities so that the, first of all the alpha version would reflect uh, the NuNet platform well enough, and uh, more importantly. The, it would provide a basis for the iterative building of the future versions on top towards reaching the full, uh, full, full potential of the NUNET platform.